All right, welcome back everybody to LearnStudio.com. My name is Patrick Rochon. I'm a professional light painter. And um, here's uh, the second part of our um, light painting portrait work, uh, workshop. Um, we have a great model today. Her name is uh, Agnes and her makeup was done by Simone. And uh, the whole light painting crew is here, uh, the whole LearnStudio.com crew is here supporting the technique, the lighting cameras and everything, the sound. Um, we do accept questions, uh, feel free to write on Facebook, uh, on the Learnster um, page, and uh, we'll do our best to answer as quickly as we can. Um, we, we do have a question from James. Um, James is asking if there's a, a suitable or recommended numbers of lumens for the torch uh, while uh, when we do portraiture. Uh, it, or, or can we use any kind of torches? Well, the answer is, um, I have here a uh, Claris um, that's 620 lumens, I think, which is very, very powerful. It's a very strong light. We have to be careful with the eyes. The advantage with the Claris is if you put, put a, a thick purple or a thick red or a thick uh, blue on it, it still throws a lot of light. So it's a, it's a great tool to work with. You just be very aware and conscious of how you light the, the model's eyes. And these are, I don't know how many lumens, maybe 50 or something. They're from the dollar store. I use them, I use them uh, close to the face and they, they, they're still very, very good. So wide variety of lumens uh, in, my, in my kit and they're all, the, they all fit somehow. If you know how to use them, they're, they're all good. Um, after 600 lumen, if you're going to 1,000 or more for portraits, I think it's, it becomes too much. I think it's, it's just too powerful. Your, your model is going to uh, force uh, their eyes and you're not going to get good results. I think the, the very high lumen uh, flashlights are great for outdoors when you're, you want to use, uh, uh, use it to uh, light a landscape or something like that, then you need great power. I know nowadays they go, they have uh, 2,000, 3,000 lumen um, flashlights. They're more powerful than headlights on a car. Uh, the technology is uh, growing and moving quickly. It's great for us. It allows us to, to create and to have a lot of cool tools to play with. Some of them are very expensive, but now, nowadays you, you don't have to invest on, on expensive flashlights. You can find stuff and start with what you have or, or uh, get the uh, lights from the dollar store or from the, the hardware store um, and, and start with this. So if you love it and you need more tools, then slowly you build your, your collection. I'm starting to narrow down my tools. I'm starting to have less and less tools and only use what really uh, is, uh, is uh, practical and useful. I'm, I, I feel like on the shooting, if there's too many tools at one point, I'm more like, uh, should I use this or should I use that? Or, so I eliminate. I, I know from the night before I've been thinking about my, my shooting and I eliminate a lot of tools and I, I um, try to be more creative and direct uh, my, my shooting towards uh, simplicity. So uh, I go deeper in my creativity and I get better result this way. Um, that said, um, what, what is fun is if you have different tools that have uh, different, that does different effects, what is cool is to have these tools have the same colors as other tools. So if you're coming with one effect in the back with this uh, greenish blue and you want to put the same light so it matches with another kind of uh, flashlight, if you have the same gels on it, then it gives you a nice palette, so you can match effects even if they're, you know, you match colors even if they're different effects. So this is what I'm trying to do more and more is to have like, okay, here are my gels, my favorite gels. I'm going to put these on every tool so I can really have my, my color palette working well for, uh, for my photo. Hope this answered your question. Um, if later you have more questions, if tomorrow or, or later you have uh, some questions, just write to me on patrickprashan.com and I'll be happy to answer these questions. 
Um, one thing uh, for, for the people who were with me earlier today, um, you saw me working on, uh, on, on the face lighting up the face, doing a, a basic lighting with different tool. As you noticed, I was always starting from the back, coming towards the front, so the model is uh, aware and ready. So you're not oh, turning on the light right in their eyes and going like having a reaction. So I always start like here and I move towards the front. And also, it's a good place to start because usually in a portrait, and I say usually because there's exceptions and sometimes you want to create different effect, you want to light, what is important is to light the forehead, the eyes, the nose, and the mouth. So this is kind of a triangle that's really important here. And I see a lot of people light painting and they're doing one side, they're doing yeah, and they're doing this, and then the model looks really funny. So in a, a classic lighting, you want to do that zone, you want to put some light on that zone here to have some even light in their face. Of course, if you want to get creative and experiment and add shadows, you can do that too. And um, that can be interesting too, also. So um, we added a bit of styling here. We found some, some accessories and some fabric in the studio. So we decided we're going to you know, add this in the shot and see how it comes out. Um, this is very cool because it, ha it reflects. It's a kind of metallic. So we have some good reflections happening here. So we'll be able to create some textures and, and create uh, enhance our, our character. Um, now we're going to get to the fun part. We're going to do, again, the basic lighting like I did this morning. Plus, we're going to find, and that's the key, is finding what effects work, what kind of light, what kind of color works with the whole thing so it becomes one. And that's really the goal, is like the background, the model, the face, the styling, the makeup, it all becomes one thing. Um, that might take some trial and error. Uh, to get to that point, but it's not that hard. You observe the colors, you observe patterns, and you try to th make things match in a simple way. Working with simplicity, simplicity is always best and uh, not always easy. Uh, sometimes you want to get really excited and you're just uh, putting a lot of light and a lot of colors, a lot of stuff. And after a while, we just tend to go to the core, get simple, and um, get great results that way. They're often the one that speaks the most, that are the most powerful. My camera's on a tripod. Uh, I'm all manual setting. F focus is manual. Um, Sometimes I'll use the, the, the déclencheur in French. Well, I'll use the, um, not the power cord, it's the shutter release. Thank you, John. And <laughs> we'll use the shutter release. And um, sometimes I'll ask somebody to help me if I'm busy and I can't reach a camera. Sometimes I'll ask from, for some certain uh, a person, I'll ask Emma to uh, 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 open the shutter and close the shutter for me. Um, that's up to you if you want some help or not in the studio. You can ask or you can do everything yourself like I've done for uh, about 20 years. Um, that said, I think we are ready to turn off the lights and start uh, light painting. All right. Our eye is going to get used to the darkness. It's going to take a few seconds. Oh, you can keep your eyes closed, just relax. So like I said before, and now that the lights are off, I can show you the example. Lighting, the forehead, the eyes, the mouth is like a classic base to start with. You know, you, you, if you're putting light there, you, you're pretty much you're going to get something good and something safe. If you're just doing this and doing that and going a bit random, you're going to get a lot of weird shadows happening. Um, in, in light painting, we often... Uh, use the light, we use some lights and go close to the skins and sometimes we, we bring out the worst of a person's skin because we're, we're, we're really like, like a razor, we're just going like on the skin. So we have to be careful with that. The best way, if, if uh, the skin comes out too much and the texture of the skin is too strong, 
the, the best way is not to go too um, sharp on the skin, but go more front in the same angle as the camera. So this will bring the best out of the skin. Even people with beautiful skin, you can really make their skin look uh, more um, rough. So you can be careful with that. And like I said, you just fill in. Don't, don't make it too shadowy. Make it more soft with, with light and then the skin should come out uh, fine. So um, we have some red, yellow, black, um, and then some shiny material. Earlier, I really liked... Uh, the white was interesting, maybe we should start with white. If we do start with white, then what should we do as a background? Um, I'm looking at my lights right now, going like, okay, the orange would be strong, the neon would be strong. Should I do a bit of feather? I could try the feather. I could just give it a shot and see. It's, a, it's kind of white. I'll see if it matches, if it works with the, uh, with the, the character we're creating today. So I'll put the feather close nearby on the small table. Um, I'll take a small puck, a small LED puck with no filter on it. And then um, I'll get this ready right here. Then I'll take my powerful light. I'll ask the model to close her eyes so I can do the framing and the focus. Keep your eyes closed, Agnes. Thank you. And I'll just move a bit my camera. I'll zoom in. I'll do the focus. I like this framing. It just needs a little tweak here. This is nice. Zoom out a little bit. Okay. Okay, this is pretty good. It gives her a little room to move so she can do her creative part. And I'm going to check my aperture and my f stop. I'm at f8. It's a bit uh, too open for me. I think we'll go f11 and see how that does. Okay, Agnes, you can open your eyes. Right. How are you? Good. Yeah, good. I like that. Let's start with that. I'm just looking, observing, uh, giving Agnes a chance to warm up also. And I'm, you know, just letting my, my body move, my mind observe. And I'm looking also at the shine on the new um, accessories, see how it would do with the, with the uh, this picture. It's great. So, okay, I'm going to try something and see how we, how we are doing on the exposure and the combination of lights. I'm just throwing an idea in here. I'm just trying something and I'll see what it does. Okay, you ready? ready. All right, I forgot to turn on my red light here so she has a reference point to look at. Now it's on. Three, two, one. Shutter is open. The white light is coming. The forehead, mouth, a bit of cheek like this, a bit of, not too much, a bit in the neck. And then um, the feather, I'm not sure how to use it yet, but I'm just going to try and find out if it works or not. I'm going to put a bit here, do like some kind of trails here that are more like energy flowing. and. Um, and this, that, she got stuff like this. I'm just taking a moment to see if I want to add something. Maybe I'll go a bit sideways from behind like this with a thicker stroke. And then I'm gonna see what I have. I know about what I have, but I'm not sure if it really fits together. So I'm looking at this going like, it does fit together. I think the whole thing works. It's a little bit overexposed uh, on the face, but I, I have a feeling that I'm on the right track, that it looks pretty much like I imagined. She looks like a goddess from another universe. It's a bit like Star Wars. You know, it's a bit like a, 
the queen of the circus. It's, it's interesting to me. I, I like the fabric, the reflections, the makeup, the expression. I think it's all good. So I'll, I want to keep going with this formula and then maybe with a little bit less light on her face. Of course, I could do Photoshop or Lightroom afterwards and tone it down, but you know, let's try to get it in camera as close as possible and then we'll tweak a bit later. Okay, let's do another one. This is great. We have a good uh, starting point and I'm not going to change anything on my camera, just the light. I'll be a bit quicker on the base. Three, two, one, open. All right, um, maybe this one I can go a bit slower to make it a bit brighter. You don't have to work in a symmetrical way. I have a natural tendency of doing so. You can, uh, the makeup is not symmetrical and that's what makes it interesting. It's always a personal choice. It's very nice. I like how the light goes behind her on this shot. Um, the, uh, the expression is, is uh, the first one, the expression was better. And I feel like the bottom, the, the shadow of the, the cheeks are a little bit strong. So maybe I should fill that in on the next shot. But I like the uh, general feeling. I'm going to keep going and I'm going to tweak a bit more. I'm just thinking here. Yeah, I'll do it with my bass line. Three, two, one. Raise your chin up just a little bit. Yeah. Three, and make your eyes a little bit bigger. Just a little bit. Just a yeah, that's nice. Three, two, one. It's open. Lights. I'll do a bit of fill in. That was, I, I put some more highlights on the neck to get rid of the shadows. Usually I'm a bit more spontaneous, but now for the workshop, I'm explaining every step. So being a bit more technical, but once I get into the flow, often I'm not going to look at the result. Once I feel like I got something great, the lighting is great on her. Now we see a trace of, my, uh, of the light puck of the LEDs. In this case, I would prefer, sometimes I keep it, sometimes it's great. In this case, maybe I would prefer without. It's not bad though. It's, it's nice. I like the neck, it's much better. And then, when I feel like I have something good, I just keep going, and I keep going, and sometimes I don't even look in the camera anymore, because I feel like I'm, 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 I'm in my zone. I'm in the, the action, and I feel like, oh, it's happening. So I ask the model to tweak little things from one shot to another, to move her head one side, the other, just to change little things. And I, I do a, a few series, three, four, five, six, where I just go on a roll, and then I stop and, and look at the results. So that creates a flow. A creative flow, and uh, usually it's uh, it's fun. You get a lot of surprises after. It's good to l look at your results at the beginning, just to make sure you got all the right elements in place, and then you just keep creating. Um, I feel like all the colors are right. The mixture of lights and all of that is works. So if if uh, I keep going for, for a, a few more, I know I'll get the, a perfect shot. Then I want to try some, I'm, I'm moving on, I want to try something different. Uh, this is a mixture of color. Earlier I saw that it makes quite a nice light. Uh, it almost balances it, itself out, but it still leaves a little trail of a little trace of, of color. I'm going to try it as a basic lighting and see how, how it goes. I'm going to test it first and then I'll choose, depending on the result, I'll choose something to go and do some decor around her. So on this one, let's try the, the head a bit lower on an angle, yeah, and the eyes still up, just the eyes, yeah. I'll have a look at this. It's interesting. Okay. 
This one is not as strong. Maybe it needs new batteries or maybe the gels are eating up a lot of light. So um, I'm going to go a bit slower. Okay, shutter is open. Doing like a lighting like this. And then maybe a lighting like this. And I'll just look at that and see what what I have if I'm if I'm close. Okay, we're very very dark, and I'm really not sure where this is going. So I'm gonna do another one. We're gonna open to f8. F8 is on. Agnes, ready? Yeah, good. And then I'm gonna try it again. It's dark, I think it needs to, the battery needs to change. But I think it's interesting to look at the colors appearing here. Let's see this. Okay, I see that there's something happening. I see already, okay, there's a lot of potential here. Um, by moving the light, sometimes the blue was hitting the forehead and pink and, and purple. This is already great. I love the mood, I love the expression. Agnes is doing a great job. The makeup works perfectly. So I'm, I'm, I feel like, okay, this is, it's telling me it's, I'm on the right track. It's telling me, okay, keep going in this direction. Uh, you got something right there. So. I'm like, okay, what can I use in the back to, um, to, uh, to create a background, to create something that will work with this mm, soft, hard, edgy light, very sharp light or softer light, color. So I'm looking at this going like, okay, I know the uh, light blade, uh, this model is called Godspeed. It has a pink that could probably match this. So, I feel like it's worth a shot, except it's very, very bright compared to uh, the basic light I have on her face. So yeah, it could work quickly, or I know this one has, um, if you press it again, the power goes down one notch. And in theory, if I switch it off and I, I switch it back on, it should keep the setting in memory on the Claris RS11. So I'm gonna try it, switch it off, switch it on. Yeah, I got the same power again. And it has three different settings. There's another one that's lower, that's not bright enough. So I'm gonna go back, too bright, center. I think the center will be good, but it's still quite a, a bright and sharp tool. So I'll have to be smart on how I use it and not put too much of it. I'll have to really like find a way to just do one, two, and get out of the frame or something. Off, on, it kept it in memory. Uh, it's on the, oops. <laughs> I remember the interface. So this should be good. I'll make a bit of room here. I should clean that up. And then I have my two tools that I want to use for the background and the foreground. All right, so Agnes, get ready. I'm gonna just check what kind of expression she's giving, what kind of pose, and I'm gonna see if the clothes is okay. Let's just bring it back towards the center a little bit. You can hold it, but I just want it to finish as a V. Yeah, that's nice. Okay, she's got, that's nice. All right, so Agnes is ready. I could do, at this point, I could do a little check on the Focus and framing. You can close your eyes, please. Thank you. All right. Yeah, the framing is great. We're in the center. The focus is good. All right. So we're good to go. You can open your eyes. Oh, shutter is open. First light. The base. And then 
the background. And then let's see what that does. I need to check my combination of light for color and exposure. So I'll close the, oh, we're pretty good. It's a very different light than I, used, I did before, but it's the same basic light. To me, I feel like, okay, the combination is good. The expression colors, we got something good here. So let's do a few more and see what comes out of it. I'll check my light. It's confirmed that it's in the center power, medium power. It's good. And then this, ready? You can change a little bit the expression. Yeah, that's nice. I like it. The mouth is beautiful like this. Right, next one. Let's see how that goes. Super nice. I, this lighting is even better. The expression, um, face, and background. It works very well for me. There's a little zigzag here in the forehead. I mean, personally, I would leave it there. I would just live with this and f feel like it's part of it. It's part of the, the graffiti spontaneous side of it. Let's do a few more. I love this combination. I think the colors are great and Agnes is working beautifully. So let's do some few more just because we're in a good zone. It's fun. Something's happening. So I push it further. When something's happening, I push it further. When nothing's happening, I start changing things around. And that's how I work. Okay, another one. Beautiful work. Thank you. Shutter is open. I went under to add reflection in her eyes. And then let's experiment a bit here. And let's keep it simple and see what that does. Interesting. We added sparkles in the makeup. They're coming out very well, beautiful. But I feel like there's a little distortion in the mouth and in the cheek. So I have to be careful with my lighting. The previous one was more interesting, but let's just do a few in a row and see what happens. So let's do two or three. And every time, just change a little something in your, in your head. Yeah, these little expressions you do are perfect. S subtle and beautiful. Okay, it's ready. Can we close the monitor, please? Or just um, put another image? It's bright. Okay, thank you. So she's looking this way, so I'm gonna use this as an inspiration to move the light in the same direction as she's moving. So we get a bit of harmony. Nice, uh, a little bit dark, but still we're not far. I could add a bit more in the back, but it's still a, a pretty good picture. Let's do another one. Oh, I like this new expression. Put some light on her accessories, other reflections. And 
then I can even come in front of her like this. Now I got one that's going like this and then I can do something like that and see what that does. So right now I'm not pushing it too far, I'm just uh, experimenting, keeping things simple. It almost looks like the, f uh, the, the front light is very strong, it's a blast, but it looks like that's the source that's lighting her up. Um, I like the mood, it's interesting. In photography, usually we don't accept that whites are burnt out or blacks are completely blocked, but in light painting, it's like painting, we're allowed to go completely black on certain parts and completely white. If it works in the image, of course, we're allowed to do this. Um, according to my rules, <laughs> I always did uh, some parts super overexposed and some parts super uh, dark without details. And sometimes I feel like it works beautifully in this, uh, in, in the image. In this, I would keep it like that. I would just bring it up a bit in, in, the, in the computer afterwards. This, this is the face I would light it up just a little bit more. And I think we'd have a, an interesting shot there. Let's do another one just because I'm, I'm loving this combination so much. I'm having fun. The monitor, please. Thank you. And then Agnes, a little different. You're doing great, by the way. It's fantastic. Nice. Cool. Oh, one side is more lit. Um, let's try the strobe on this one. Maybe I could do a structure of uh, like this, uh, close to our shoulder, do a structure like this. And then the other side, I'll just do a structure a bit differently. And then I'll see how that goes. So I've changed a little something every time, just playing and, and, and seeing what comes out of it. I think it looks great. Again, the light is not exactly, the power of the light is not exactly balanced in the program. I could just bring the, the face up half a stop or something and it would be well balanced. It looks very street, um, like she's in a club, some kind of place. It looks very energetic. Some before looked a bit more moody, more mysterious. So we're having very cool moods and feelings coming out of this series. So it's very exciting. I could go and play with this combination for another half an hour and just push it and push it and, and keep um, flowing with this combination. But for the workshop, we'll, we'll move on. We'll try some new combinations and other tools and see what comes out of it. What do you think about the images so far? Oh, I think it's beautiful. Yeah? Yes. You like it? Love it. Mm, does it um, work with your character? I think my character is really anything that, like, because this lighting is so versatile that you can really turn the character into anything you want. Right. It transforms the mood and the, the face a bit, huh, from one lighting to another? Yes, it does. Right. And that, that is the, the power of light painting is we can really transform people. And that's why I said at the beginning of the shooting, yeah, we can create monsters sometime and, so, uh, and it's, it's natural. It happens. It happens to me all the time. I could say on every shooting. Um, earlier, when we played with, the, there was um, an amazing greenish blue that would create this beautiful mood. Um, we did at the beginning. I want to work again with this light and see what we can do with this. So I'm going to prepare this on my table, move, it, move a few things out of the way. And um, I'm going to need something in the background. I could try the EL wire and see where that goes. It could be a good color match. It seems like it could be a co good color match, but let's test it and find out. I'm looking at this and looking at that. I'm like, yeah, I think this could work. Now, the EL wire does amazing textures. I can do textures or I can just do a plain background, a linear background that's going from left to right, or from up to down. So if I think about it, and I'm doing okay, 
this is a very moody uh, lighting so I feel like she could be in some kind of hallway coming through this uh, blue light so I think I'll do a very linear background like this and keep it simple and see uh, how it goes switch off the red light um, let's uh, recheck our focus just in case it's good to do that often take the habit you don't want to have bad surprises afterwards if you could close your eyes Agnes thank you I like the direction you're looking at right now I think we're gonna keep that that's nice you can open your eyes so this is good the focus is good the frame is good I'm gonna turn on the open the shutter okay three two one and we're on I'm going to be careful with the skin and fill it up well. Do a bit of light on these accessories. And then for this one, I'm just going to switch it on outside the frame quickly to make sure I'm good. And then I'm going to come here. I'm going to start. I'm going to leave it for like, uh, okay, I'm going to start moving right away. Switch on. I'm going to slow down in the center, accelerate a bit again, and see how that comes out. Amazing lighting on her. The texture in the background is a little bit dark, but it works. I love the, how she's coming out. The lighting and the, even the highlight on her is strong, but it works. The contrast is fantastic. The expression of the mouth is a little open. Everything is perfect. The background's a bit dark. I could bring it up a bit in Photoshop. The next one, I'm going to try again, and I'm going to go even slower in the background to have a, a stronger uh, effect. I got too many lights here. I'm just going to take some out of the way. The idea behind this table is to have clarity happening. Okay, and this one could be on. My little red light. All right, let's do the next one. You're doing great, Agnes. We're getting some good results here. Three, two, one. I notice she's looking on the side a bit, so I'm gonna emphasize the lighting on that side. I'm gonna do a little fill here, and then a little neck, and then a little bit of work on the body like this and the accessories and then I'm gonna try again the same thing I'm gonna get ready outside the frame on off I'm ready then I'm gonna go much slower I want to bring that up at least a stop and a half so I'm gonna go Tai Chi on this one and then go slower in the center because I want this to be a bit brighter and then accelerate a little here and let's see what we have. If you do Tai Chi, it's great for light painting. It's nice. I'm liking this a lot. See on this picture, she looks much, she looks older. She looks like an older lady compared to the other ones because of the shadows I've created in her face. And that's why you have to warn your model before she might say, I look too old on this. If the model is very sensitive, sometimes, you know, but I like it. It's coming out of this super futuristic new movie. The mood is very, very good. The match of color and patterns works. Even the background looks a little bit uh, Asian. There's a feeling of, you know, uh, how do you call these uh, um, things that you put in the middle of the room to hide part of the room, the uh, auvent. Or in, in, um, they're, they're very popular in Asia. They, they fold in three, a the screen. panels. Isn't it called a screen? Isn't that a screen? I think and so. And those three panels that are foldable. Yeah, I mean, it looks a bit like this in the back. It, I feel a story in that picture, so I think it's great. Yeah, I could keep going half, you know, I could keep going 20 minutes more on this and just push it and push it and push it. And I really want to because I have a great occasion with this look we have with Agnes here. So maybe I'll do another one just for fun and um, go a little bit more experimental with it.
just to allow myself to discover. It might be good, it might be, it might not, it doesn't matter. Just to allow myself to discover something and to learn and to see if another venue uh, would be good. Get out of your comfort zone. I always do that to myself. I got this zone now. I know I can get great shots out of this, but now I'm going to try it a little different, get out of the comfort zone. I don't want to be stuck in a formula. I want to give myself the chance to evolve. So let's uh, turn off the screen. Thank you. All right. Are you ready? Yep, you're good. Just a second, I'm gonna block the lens with my shirt. Just wanna check a bit. Okay, open your eyes. Great. Okay, we're ready. Three, two, one. This time I'm gonna go a bit more from under, like this. But I'm not, I'm gonna remember the forehead, bit of side, head and shoulder, bit of the fabric, and then, it was, the lighting went a bit more from under. I don't know if I did my, my mouth, the, the, the mouth and the chin properly. I went a bit too quick and I was thinking at the same time. But we'll find out. So this one, I'm just gonna play like this. If I had the Nikon manual lens on, I could open the aperture on the same exposure. I could go from uh, whatever f-stop f I'm at now and I could just open it for this EL wire who needs a lot more time to print in the camera. But I'll give it a shot. I'll see how it goes. And then I kind of created the pattern. I'm breaking a bit the pattern, making another layer, moving a bit quicker so that layer will be a bit darker. All right, let's see what that does. It happens sometimes I forget to open my shutter on my camera. <laughs> it's interesting. I like the lighting from under. Um, I'm glad the chin is lit enough. I thought it was a bit too dark. We got something good here. I'm, I'm happy with this direction. I could push it a bit more, but f just for the exercise of today, I think we'll, we'll leave it at that. I think you get the picture. This is very, very cool. It looks like a queen coming out of this icy energy, crystal-like. It's nice. Um, this is a, a, a zone I like to be in. I know this one, is uh, an amazing tool. You saw that yesterday it does great texture. This one doesn't have a memory, so if I switch it back on and off, it goes to the brightest. It's a bit strong for what I, for what I need to do today, so I might switch it on outside the frame and then find the right setting on it and then hide it like this behind me and then come behind her and do what I have to do and then do the same, hide it behind her and then I might do something like that. I could put the, the black glove on also to stop the light from showing. I'm trying to do something like this where I'm hiding the light coming behind her and I'm not exposing anything or anyone and then do my thing and then again just leave the frame. Sometimes it happens if the buttons are not at the right place or it's not the right power, I'll improvise something quickly to um, So I can use that tool and uh, I'll find a solution. Uh, a lot of the creativity is problem solving. A lot of creation is problem solving. Uh, the more you do creation, the more you realize it's most of the time that's what you do in businesses and every situation of life and relationship in creation. You're all, most of the time you're problem solving. So I, I know I want to do that yellow, fiery texture background. Now I got a match my foreground. Um, I, I do have a yellow light. Um, I feel like I could add a bit of red also. I could use a, a simple light. These are the, 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 the cheap $2 lights. I'll, I'll try red and yellow in the front and then I'll do a background 
with that very strong cone we made yesterday. Um, so I might want to use one in the pocket like this. I should do a focus and a framing, but I feel like Agnes didn't move one notch. I think the yellow will be great. And I'll have a, add a touch of red. I don't have any tape or nothing protecting my, um, my light, so I might have trails showing up. I'll see if it's good or not. F-stop, we're at eight. Eight. Can we go F11, please? Thank you. Okay. Agnes, you ready? Ready. Nice. Not too even on this one. I'm going to go a bit. Um, leave some space for the other light. Leave some shadows. Um, definitely go on the eyes and on the mouth because there is some red there on the makeup, so it's going to bring it up. And then my light, I have to go outside the frame, get it ready, it's strong. I might even try it on the lower setting and see how that does and just work slowly. I'm not trying to create an even pattern, but right now I'm just testing, see where that goes. I think this one just went a bit in front of her face too much, but we'll see if it works or not. And even the flashlight, I'm turning it on itself because from one side to another I get a different texture so I'm like twisting it and turning it so I have different patterns it's interesting I like the color combination there's something there and I feel like we have to work a little bit more to get it right but we have a good combo on the on the, her right, I mean that was a, a weird movement. It's not quite working for me. The rest of the pattern works well, but I feel like I have a base. I can keep going in that direction because there's something there that works. The light is harsher. These small lights are harsher than bigger ones. So either I work with it uh, and make more intense lighting. These are great colors. Let's keep going. Let's do a few more. I noticed she moved all the way back to the chair, so let's refocus. Close your eyes, please. It needs a little focus here. And a little reframing. This. Huh. I'm gonna free my hands. Again, I don't turn on the big light because I rather stay in the dark and keep working with the flashlight. It keeps the mood and it keeps the flow. It's nice. Okay, you can open your eyes. Get my lights ready. So I'll start with the yellow since it's the main and then I'll do the red and I'll do the background. This order to me is important to get the best results. Okay, are you guys ready? Ready. Good. Yellow's on. Put a little bit less yellow than before. And then the red. I'll do it a bit differently. Coming from under, doing the... Put some on our clothing, accessories, and a bit in the forehead. Okay, I'll try a stronger setting for the background, but I'll work quicker and hopefully I'll get my movements right just in one shot. And then get out the frame, switch off and see what that does. Background might be strong, but we'll see. It's pretty good. 
Is she looks like she's a, a performer in the circus to me. That's, that's what I see when I see this shot. That's what I imagine. And she seems confident, a little bit smiling. Colors are good. My red is not showing that much. But it accentuates the makeup that's there and brings out the colors that are right there. I like the red spot on the on her left side of her, of her head up there in the corner, on the, the right side of her head, on her right side. It's, uh, I like it, it's a nice mix. This with the eyes and with the neck, that's red. I like those three combination. Um, I wish my background was a bit more moody. I think I'll go back to the um, lower setting on the flashlight. Let's do an, a last one with this combination. Okay, nice. Okay, I notice she changed her expression. I'll try a more experimental light. It's more sculpting. Do a little detail here. There. I'll bring in quickly the red one because I don't want her to move, so I want to get that done. Red is not strong at all. I could actually take a bit more time. With my hand, I'm like um, hiding the source. Maybe I'll do a few of light painting with the fingers, create some texture. Maybe it'll be good, maybe not, we'll see. moving my finger, putting light on my finger, creating some more organic texture. I could even come and do some in the neck in front. It goes like this and connect all of that together. Then I'll put my lower setting on the flashlight quickly. And then I'll just um, go closer to the body and then do some textures just like this. I'll work in a different way, trying to discover and open new doors all the time. And then let's see. This is much better. Um, I like the combination of the red and the, the yellow the textures are better. The yellow is a bit strong on, on her left side, but I could live with it. I, I think it's a great shot and I would bring her face up just a little bit in, in post-prod production, just a touch. But I like the expression, it's different than the other ones. It has more of an in-between moments. Um, I think it's interesting. So I got a good combination here. I could keep going and uh, make this more and more rich and more and more interesting. Do we have any questions? Is there anything we have to take care of? Thank you. Uh, meanwhile, there was a, a previous blue that was darker that we used. That was very interesting. I'll get the glove out. There was a, this blue before we used that was very interesting when we were testing her, her face. Um, I got an idea. If we test this with the water tool, how would it look like together? It's not the same blue at all, but maybe it will work. Um, in this case, I might come and do, as a second shot, things close to her face. I'm gonna warn her and maybe like do it a little bit before so she doesn't have a surprise if I'm doing like this around her afterwards, right? So I might wanna do some water effects really close to her body and close to her head. So make sure that it's fine with your model. Are you okay with this? Yeah, I'm okay with this. Yeah. If it tickles a little, it's normal, but 
it's the background, so if you blinked or something, it's, it's fine. It won't, uh, it won't show in the camera. So my lights are ready. My blue is quite dark. My F11. I should be okay. I'm gonna try one. Just gonna check my frame and my focus. Please close your eyes. The focus was good. The frame is a little bit off. So we'll move a little. That's nice. I love this expression. Even with the eyes closed, it looks great. Um, we could do one with the eyes closed and see how that comes out. And, um, and as a test, as soon as you close, yep, yeah. okay. Three, two, one, and we're starting. Beautiful the expression, soft and gentle, dreamy. And then let's put some water in here and see, okay, how do I wanna do the water? I wanna do the water maybe coming from above and then coming down like this, a bit behind, a little bit in the face, not too much in the face, then maybe a last one. And let's see what that does to give us a direction. I think we got something beautiful here that the eyes Clothes worked very well for this shot. I just improvised with her, uh, you know, with what I saw. I saw her with the eyes closed. I liked it. I said, okay, let's keep this. I, um, the color combination works. And I see a little highlight from the rain tool on, the le on the, her right side. Just a little tiny highlight there on the face. It looks beautiful. It adds this special touch to it. I feel like this is also a good direction and I want to do some more. I'm really excited with this image. It makes me want to do more. I feel like it's a yes. And let's do a few more just for fun. And I'll explore a few different movements and a few different expressions and see what comes out. Would you like me to have more neutral expressions or more dramatic expressions? Um, let's do one where your eyes are opening in an exaggerated way, as wide as you can, like as big as you can, yeah. And let's look at the camera this time, where the red light is. Again, higher the chin, and big eyes, yeah. Let's try this, just for fun. Let's see what it, how it goes. Three, two, one. I'll do the eyes right away. Lighting. Her accessories too. I don't know if I did the chin properly. We'll see after. And then this one I'm gonna go more towards the towards the out. Like if the water was a little bit coming from her. Make it a bit more nuts with the eyes like this. You can relax your eyes but keep your body still. So it can be a, like a bit of a crazy picture. It can be fun. We'll just see afterwards. All right, let's see what that does. She does look like a synchronized swimmer, <laughs> having a, an interesting moment. <laughs> It's a bit more mad, but her eyes looks great like this. I think this could be, uh, it's pretty good. Uh, it's a bit, see, I was worried about the chin and the cheeks. I was worried I didn't put enough light there, and I was right. Let's do another one. I'm going to try to perfect the lighting on her face, the base lighting, and then maybe I'll try the water in a more spontaneous way. Can I just Yep. When is it that you are actually taking a photo? Because I know sometimes you tell me that I can relax. Sometimes, like when it's when you pull the, or is it when you pull the trigger that you are taking the photo of me? Well, it's, it's a good question. A lot of people ask me this question. Actually, it's a long photo. So here I open the camera, 
and the whole time he's taking a picture. Okay. And I do my moves, and then I come and close the, the shutter. Oh, so the okay. whole, it's, it's not a fraction of a second, the pictures will usually like one sixtieth of a second, like shh, shh. But now it's like a 30 second or 20 second or a minute long picture. Uh, oh, it's a minute long picture. Just because earlier you told me to relax my eyes, but keep my body. That's right, because I was done with this. So this was in the dark. Uh, okay. So he wasn't printing in the camera anymore. So I could keep and just do the, 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 the details around you. Uh, so it didn't matter if your eyes relaxed, because I know you were uh, having an intense expression, so I didn't want to push it. Or okay, I see. You for, I didn't want you to get tired. And that's why I always do the face first, so that's the, the print in the camera. And then after I do the background. Okay, three, two, one. bit more sad expression, nice, so I'm going to work with the lines like this. Some on the fabric, headpiece, okay, that should be enough. Water tool, used differently. Um, this here, maybe I should have this here, maybe I should have a bit of here, and here. And I think that's enough. I don't want to overdo it. Let's see what that does. Beautiful shot. A very interesting one eye. It looks like there's a sparkle or a light in the eye. It makes the eye uneven. Actually like that. Whoa! Actually like that very much. It makes it a bit more strange, but it works with the the feeling and it works with the picture. So I think this shot is um, is is impeccable the way it is. I wouldn't change it much. I wouldn't change it in in Photoshop. Just maybe uh, check the contrast and the, the brightness a bit. But it's a beautiful shot. Beautiful expression. And I actually like that the eyes are uneven like this. It makes a, an interesting uh, left-right separation. The balance is like, is not there. You know, it's out of balance and it makes it interesting and beautiful. Do we want to do a last one just because these tools are so cool? Let's, uh, how about you wrap yourself well with this till the neck, if you hold them and wrap yourself completely, yeah. Let me check with the light here, uh, soft light. Like you're protecting yourself somehow, you know, from the rain or you need that comfort, that safety zone. Oh, let's readjust that. Okay, and try to, uh, yep, get this. That's nice, I like the hands like this, that's great. And then maybe bring your eyes up just a little bit. Yeah, 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 that's nice. Let's check the framing and the focus. Close your eyes. Okay, this is really nice. Love the position. Great, you can open your eyes. This is super, super, uh, Super cool, I love it. Let's open the shutter and play with this, like this. Um, as you noticed, I'm almost in front of the model, but I'm not. I'm always on that angle, leaving the open space for the camera, never blocking the light, and then
I added a bit of extra there. I hope I didn't put too much. Very cool. This could be a nice album cover. It's got a nice punk, futuristic punk look to it, uh, sophisticated. It really looks like a, a, a new kind of Grace Joan from the future. I love the, uh, how sharp it is and her expression is strong. So beautiful combination of uh, model, styling, makeup, uh, expression and tools. So that's great. Uh, I love these shots. It's a beautiful series. Um, but I'm not going to do any more uh, uh, of this combination because we want to work through a few different uh, tools. Um, I know somebody asked me earlier if we could combine flash and uh, other kinds of light to make effects. And the answer is yes, of course we can. It's about finding the right effect. Um, I didn't put any, um, I didn't put any uh, filter on my flash. I could have, I usually do, but uh, now we're gonna use it uh, with, uh, as it is white. And what could work with the white right away if this tool is white? Yes, it is. The uh, Light blade monolith could be a good combo since we have angles and the flash also has angles. So I feel like there's a cool match here and they're both powerful tools. So I think they could be uh, a nice match. So full power here. I gotta find my button here. I think it's this one. It is. Um, this could be surprising. I'm gonna throw a bunch of strobes at you, and um, but it'll be a, a quick light painting. So let's look at your expression. I'm gonna turn this down a bit. It's a nice expression. She's looking towards there. So I'm gonna consider that one. I'm light painting. Uh, close your eyes, I'm going to focus. All right. My frame. Yep, that's nice. It's beautiful. You can open your eyes, I'm done here. So, my flash has to be held in a special way so I can hit the button properly. This is the way, got it. We're ready, three. Two, one, we open the shutter. Now you gotta be smart about the flash because I don't see much what I'm doing, so it's so quick. One, two, three. All right, let's see what that does. I might put a little bit more in the background. Like this, half circle. And then this one, I think, strobe could be nice. Or maybe just like this. And uh, I'll add another layer with the strobe sideways. and I'll see what that does. I'm not sure about the exposure again. The flash was very, very strong. It's, it's interesting. We're definitely overexposed. I like it in a way, overexposed, but I'm gonna try a bit darker. I'm gonna ask you to do a bit more strong eyes, a bit more strong, severe eyes to, to, work, to match with the angles. If we could go to um, F, 22 maybe? Yeah, well let's try F22. Okay, flash my hands. Um, 
Um, let's look at your expression. Yeah, that's nice. That's sharp. Since we're working with angles, might as well go sharp on the expression also. Make sure the flash works. It works. Shutter is open and we're ready to go. Now I really went close to her, this is going to be completely burnt out, but that's what I wanted. Maybe it'll be interesting. And um, maybe like this, that. And like this, like that, oops, and maybe I'll come and and I'll maybe even try in front of her uh, in transparency and see what that does. If it works with the flash that I did just now. And let's see what that does. That's really pushing the creation to another place. I'm not sure if I'm taking a lot of risks or if it's interesting. This is definitely a good shot. It looks awesome. It's fun mix of flash and light blade. I feel like we got something good here. The eyes are great. They're so small, so sharp. This is a very, very cool shot. Again, it looks like the uh, cover of a CD jacket or it looks like a, a, a music DVD video, something like that. I mean, I, I, I think it, the mood, the feeling, the technique is awesome. The whole thing works together as one. Um, what do you think about the shot? Yeah, I think it's uh, quite dramatic and uh, maybe next few expression we could work on something such as a bigger facial expression very very angry very mm -hmm. upset right so it looks more edgy more, more edgy yeah maybe we should do something more symmetrical where you're like really uh chin is low and you're like attacking almost attacking yeah something like that um i'm gonna quickly check on the flash you can bring it down just a little bit on the um, now I'm on one thirtieth of of its power. Let's see, oh, I can go one sixty one on sixty four, so that's even better. And then uh, this one eight, that's good. All right, so I, I brought the flash down just a little bit. It's not, a, it's half the power it was. So I like her idea. I'm going to integrate the idea she just brought in. It's nice to have other people's input also. Um, they're part of the moment, utilize that. And another thing that is important, and that's why I ask her, are you ready and stuff? So she stays present, present with me. If I uh, just do my thing and, and, and I, I don't care about my model, then she might just feel alone in there and might lose some energy and be like, okay. But I always keep a conversation going or uh, a connection going between us. So she's really with me on this. This is, oh, this is going to be intense. I can feel it. This is very cool. Yeah. I forgot to ask her to close her eyes, but I think she's good. <laughs> I didn't put it directly in her eyes, lift it up a bit, but we have to be careful with that. So flash is ready, model is ready. Shutter is open. And then the flash. I think I'm gonna keep working close to the face, it's fun. And yeah, it was very close to the face this time. Uh, but I didn't put any in the background. Maybe I won't this time. Maybe I'll just use the tool. I'm gonna work here and 
I even go close to the skin like this. Built, done with the face, I'm going to build the structure around. That's good. I feel like a last one here. Close her forehead. And let's see what that does. It's very cool. I like the stars. I like the structure. The light on the face needs, it needs an extra flash in the center of the face where the eyes are and where uh, the cheeks are. I mean, we got something, we got a good base. I think we should do another one and try to be careful with uh, the basic lighting. The rest is, is fine. Even if it's a little overexposed, I still like it. Nice pose. The shutter is open. Oh. Can you open the shutter for me? For some reason I'm getting a... Yeah. Thank you. So I'll do the right lighting on her right away. That's nice. And then I'll do the sculpting. Like this. So I don't want to think too much. Oh, wrong button. That's what happened with these strobes. I got the wrong button. Fine, put the strobe down. And then use the other tool. Okay, start with the face. These nice square edges are bringing something unique to the picture. Very creative, very dynamic. Whoa. This one I'll do a bit more in the front, lower, and then do some around. And last one on the shoulder. And then let's see what that does. Thank you. I thought I forgot to <laughs> turn on the shutter. <laughs> Open the shutter. Uh, wow. Super cool. Super pop. I love the, the neck where it's going highlights and darkness and it looks like it's going in and out. And um, the light blade did a great job on this one. Her expression is nice. It's just nuts. I love this shot, it's a great shot. Maybe we should take a little pause, just a short break, maybe 10 minutes or something, and we should uh, all meet here in 10 minutes at uh, learnster.com for the rest. After we're doing even more slick lighting, I'll show you a very, very cool tool to do uh, some kind of uh, airbrush style lighting. Uh, thank you for being with us today. See you soon.